Hey, what's up? Justin here, and welcome back to 65 Drums. Today I'm doing a full in-depth review of the Elisa Strike Multipad. All the pros and the cons and a bunch of different playing examples sprinkled in. There are three main companies out there making sample pads at the moment. You have the Roland SPD SX, you have the Yamaha Multi 12 pad, and now you have the Elisa Strike Multipad, which is also a good option. The first thing I wanna talk about is the overall feel of the pad. Different companies use different rubber compounds when making their rubber pad symbols and also their multi-pads. At first, I wasn't exactly sure what I thought of it. I thought I liked the playing surface but maybe it was a little bit too soft. And then I went to a guitar center and played this side by side with a Roland SPD SX pad. And I think they made the right choice here. Definitely a good playing surface. I like it quite a bit. One interesting thing to mention is that the rubber doesn't just cover all the playing zones. It also covers a lot of the body of the multipad itself as well. The Elisa Strike multipad is also a sample pad at heart. However long the file is, it can handle pretty much anything. You can import those into the module and then assign that to one of the zones. But you don't necessarily have to import your own samples because it has a pretty strong sample library already pre-built. So it has 8,000 individual sounds and loops that cover pretty much everything. You have acoustic cymbals and acoustic drums, you have electronic drums and electronic cymbal sounds, and you also have a ton of loops. And because this Elisa sample pad also has a layering option, I found myself layering together different snares to create a new different sound that I actually wanted more. But of course, one thing that you definitely need to know is the fact that these are one-shot samples. I don't know if all of them are one-shot samples, but a lot of the different drum sounds I was playing to, when I was playing quietly, I was just hearing the exact same sample, just played at a quieter volume. I wasn't hearing a stack of 50 individual layers as I was playing from loud to soft. So keep that in mind. I also found myself really, really wishing there was some sort of desktop sound management app, or even like an iPad version of that app as well, where I could individually go through all the different sounds, find the ones I wanted, and then assign those to the different kits, and maybe do some effect work inside of that as well. The reason why I say I wish there was a standalone app for that is that Elisus has already created something like that for the Elisus Strike drum module, for their Elisus Strike drum set line. It would be quicker to do that on your computer, and then transfer those settings over to the multipad later on. Now, internal sounds can be awesome, and Alesis does have a strong library of pre-built sounds here. But of course, if you're buying a sample pad, it's probably because you also have some kicks and snares and different loops that you wanna import into the device from your laptop. They let you do this two ways. You can either use a USB cable, you know, going from your laptop to the multipad, or you can use a thumb drive to transfer those sounds. Interestingly enough, Alesis actually lets you play those sounds from the thumb drive without having to transfer them into the pad itself. Although you can definitely do that. It has 32 gigabytes of open space. Now, unfortunately, that's not 100% true because it does come with six gigabytes of internal samples. So you'll have to subtract that from the 32 gigabytes. And of course, I think the operating system also takes up a little bit. And whenever you make a loop or whatever in real time, that also takes up some of the storage. Still, that's plenty of room to work with. Most of the competition is well below that. Take a look at like the Roland SPD-SX, the black version, that's two gigabytes of space. If you take a look at the red version, that's only 16 gigabytes of space. If you take a look at the Yamaha Multi 12, that one's 64 megabytes of space, barely anything to work with. The Strike Multipad also has a good selection of effects. You get three kit effects, one master effect, a compressor, and an equalizer. And inside of the performance mode, it's really easy to toggle them on and off. You can also do this via one of the foot controllers, or you can assign a toggle on and off switch to one of the individual zones, so you can turn the effects on and off by hitting a zone with your stick. There's also another feature that ties into that called A-Link. A-Link lets you assign effects to these two knobs and as you turn the knobs, you're kind of like turning the effects on and off and like phasing in between them. It's a DJ style uh, feature that I didn't really use that much, but it is kind of cool and some people will probably be able to use it in certain settings. And just like all good sample pads, this also has a built-in looper. Now the good thing about this looper is that you can make the loops in real time. 
You don't have to save the loop after you've made it and then press play and then start playing on the second layer. It's just all very, very seamless. You can adjust how many measures you want and it's just a very simple, easy to use looper. And then after you've got it done, you can save it and actually assign it to one of the zones afterwards. As a drummer, I haven't really messed with loopers that much, and I found it really, really challenging to do it right. But loopers are incredibly fun to play around with. Now, as far as loops go, there's one thing that I definitely wish was different about this multipad. This is a pretty glaring like weakness of this. If you have a song that you want to slow down and practice to, or even if you have like an EDM track that's just moving too fast and you want it to be slower, you can't actually speed stuff up or slow it down, and I really wish they had that as a feature. So another solid feature that the Strike Multipad has is the fact that it has built-in stereo record inputs. So you could plug in a keyboard into this, use the gain knob to get the audio levels right, play some chord progressions, save that as like a 30 second loop, and now you can assign that to one of the zones on the pads. And you can build out a whole song this way. It's just a very easy way to get audio from an external source into this multipad. <laughs> One thing that no one ever explains about these two inputs though, is that they also function as the aux inputs. So you can plug your phone into this and actually hear the audio from Spotify or YouTube. This is one thing that I've been scratching my head about for a very long time until I eventually figured out that's how you get audio into this thing. One thing that I'm really happy about with this product is the fact that it has a color screen on it. Now you'd think that in this day and age, everything would have a color screen. And that's true, except when it comes to electronic drums. For some reason, e-drum manufacturers are stuck with LCD screens the size of like three pencils stacked on top of each other. Don't really understand why. A larger screen like this lets you see what's going on and you can actually go through more sounds because they can actually fit more words on the screen. They also say it's double reinforced, so it should be able to survive a couple of accidental stick hits. I know that's something that people are worried about when you have a slightly larger screen, but I don't think it's a big deal here. So if you move to the front of the device, you'll see that there are two headphone jacks in two different sizes. You don't need to worry about having the right sized headphone adapter, they got you covered. This also acts as just basically an extra output as well. This is just one of those little features that you appreciate the longer you own one of these devices. I remember the TD50 also has this, and I just really like this feature. The Strike Multipad also has two dual zone foot switch inputs. This lets you switch between kits with your feet instead of having to press one of the plus or minus buttons. This also lets you turn effects on or off. This lets you do a lot of different things. There's actually a full list of different operations that you can assign to each one of those foot switches. And thankfully, Alesis doesn't make you go buy some sort of weird proprietary Alesis foot switch. You can just use whatever one you have lying around. I'm using this one from Digitech. So looking at the back of the Alesis Strike Multipad, you can see there's a nice selection of different ports. You got two master outputs, two aux outputs, you got the record inputs, you got MIDI in and out, you got the USB ports, and there's also a bunch of trigger imports. So with this setup, I've got one snare, I've got a hi-hats, and I've got a kick drum. But you can actually split two of those inputs, so you could technically have up to five single zone pads. In addition to those pad inputs, you'll notice that there's also one just for your hi-hat. This does work with hi-hat pedals. I mostly used it with a Go e drum hi-hat controller one. You can also use it with like an Alesis one. The only one that would not work is probably a Yamaha pedal. I'm really happy that they've included this port because not every kind of multipad out there has this, but I'm not really happy how they implemented it. If you want to get this to work, you have to jump through a bunch of different hoops. If you wanna have a wide variety of open and closed sounds, here's what you're gonna to have to do. You're gonna to have to plug in one of the hi-hat pedals, and then you're gonna to have to go select a bunch of individual sounds. Remember how I said that most of these sounds are one-shot samples? That comes back to bite you here. So let's say you wanna have five variations between open and closed. You will have to take up 
four individual zones on your pad right there. The last one of that five is gonna be used on the hi-hat itself. You're gonna to have to individually select like close one, close two, close three, open one, open two, open three, assign them to all the different zones, and then put them together in the hi-hat pad group so that the one pedal is controlling all those individual sounds and can sort of differentiate between which one it should trigger depending on how much pressure you put on the hi-hat pedal. Does that sound complicated? Okay, so the next feature I wanna talk about is the fact that there are LED light bars underneath each individual zone on this pad. This isn't just a party trick that looks cool in advertisements. This is actually legitimately useful. Let me give you a couple of scenarios on how you might use this feature. I work as a stage technician, and one really common use for multipads that I've seen is just to trigger backing tracks inside of Ableton on their MacBook. And they'll usually just have one zone to be the pause button, one zone to be the play button, one zone to be the skip ahead of track button, and they'll have giant pieces of tape, you know, labeling, pause, play. Instead of doing all that, you could just have a color to signify each of those individual functions. So if you hit the one that's labeled green, that's the play button. If you hit the red one, that stops the track. Just really simple things like that. And of course, they can also flash in tempo with the metronome. And one other really interesting feature is that they can go from side to side like a loading bar in time with the loop. When it gets to the end, you know that the loop's either about to stop or start over again because it's a loop. Now, the only thing I don't like about that one feature is the fact that the tail of this loading bar is really, really long and you don't know exactly when the loop's about to end because of how big the bar is. If it was only a couple of pixels long and you could know exactly when the loop's about to end, that'd be a little bit more useful, but I like the idea overall. Okay, so unfortunately, I have to talk about one of the major downsides of the Elisa Strike Multipad. Its major weakness is the fact that it has very long load times. All the competition, their load times are non-existent. When you press next kit, it loads next kit instantaneously. And the note from the previous kit actually still keeps ringing as you go to the new kit. That is not the same with this Elisa Strike Multipad. It's kind of annoying to me, and I'm not using it in a professional environment. I'm just using it for fun down here, creating YouTube videos, stuff like that. If you're on the road with this, and seconds are precious between different songs, might be kind of annoying to a professional drummer. When you start loading a kit, the kit selector freezes and you can't get out of it. So for example, if you're combing through the different kits, you're not exactly sure which one you wanna load, and you stop there for a second thinking just a split second too long, it begins to load the kit, and you can't press the plus button to move on to the next one until it finally loads the one that you accidentally sat on for too long. All right, so moving to the front of the multipad, let's talk about some of the interesting buttons on here. There are two that I wanna mention. The first is the panic button. This is very, very useful. I don't know about you, but there have been plenty of times when I've hit an electronic pad and it starts playing a loop and I've forgotten which one I hit and I start hitting every single individual zone to figure out which one is playing the stupid loop over and over again. If you press the panic button, it will just stop all incoming sounds. Very, very useful. The second button that I really like is called pad Q. If you hold this button down and start hitting some of the zones, those sounds will only go to your headphones. This is really, really useful because what if you're plugged into the main PA system and you're actually being broadcast to everybody and you're not sure what this next zone does. You've forgotten what that zone sounds like. You can hold down this button, hit that zone, and only you will be able to hear it. And now you can actually play with confidence because you know what you're actually hitting. Now moving on to overall pricing, these things cost about $700 brand new. This is 100 bucks cheaper than the Roland one and 100 bucks more than the Yamaha one. But of course, that's assuming you can buy one in the first place because stores sell out of these really, really fast. So taking all the pros and cons into consideration, I gotta say I've walked away really impressed with this new multipad from Alesis. They have majorly stepped up their game. This new multipad is like three generations above what their previous pad did. It's got a lot of unique strengths, a lot of unique features that can't be found anywhere else from the competition. Now, of course, it's not perfect. It definitely does have some weaknesses, as I've talked about in this video, but also has a lot of strengths that no one else really has. The Elisa Strike Multipad is definitely worth considering if you wanna buy a Multipad. It is worthy competition to the Roland SPSX and also the Yamaha Multi 12. Okay, so let's move ahead to some of the questions you guys submitted that you wanted answered about this pad. Brad Ford wants to know, does it have MIDI notes beyond those used by the pads that you can assign sounds to and trigger via MIDI? And yes, I believe that is the case, you can do that. Is it well built? Is there any crosstalk going on? Is it ready to tour and take the throne from the Roland SPD-SX? I think it is well built. The only thing is it's only been on the market really for less than a year, so we don't know how it will hold up over four years or something like that. But just using it on the day to day, I think that it's pretty well built and I haven't heard any widespread reports of them breaking on people. So that's good. But again, only time will tell. 
Just want to warn you though, no multi-pad is immune to breaking. Even the Roland one, Roland's got a good reputation for durability, but apparently theirs break as well. I was just talking to a drummer a month or two ago, his multi-pad had a zone that was broken. So he was actually thinking about switching over to a drum cad. So no multi-pad is invincible, but hopefully this will hold up at least to the standards of the other ones on the market. But again, only time will tell. Thankfully, this doesn't really have any crosstalk issues in my experience. The older version, the Sample Pad Pro, had that really, really bad. This one doesn't really seem to have crosstalk issues. I know that there are plenty of bands using this live right now, so I would say you can use it on a tour if you want. It can definitely handle it. Whether or not it can take the throne from the Roland SPD SX, I would say it's on par with the Roland one. It's just better at different things. I'll probably have to make a versus video talking about why you might wanna buy the Yamaha one or the Roland one or the Alesis one, because they're literally all good at different things. The next question is from Z Drummer. When using the looping feature, is there a way for me to switch kits or do I need to save the loop and transfer it to another kit to continue looping? So the answer to this question, which I actually had to go check right now, uh, is that you have to stay on the current kit until you finish the loop. And then if you want to use it with another kit, then you'll have to switch it over to the next kit. Unfortunately, when you start looping, it kind of freezes everything and you have to continue with the loop. You can't start switching kits mid loop. Peter Griffin wants to know how many pads you can connect to it. The answer is around five, but you do have to use cable splitters to make that happen. One pad I think is one zone, the other two are dual zone, so you'll need two cable splitters in order to access all five at once and then have to do some finagling. It's kind of a pain in the butt to set pads up with this thing, but once you learn how to do it, it's fine. But remember, these are all one-shot samples, so you're not gonna get a humongous amount of dynamic range. Just know that going in. I wouldn't say this is the best sort of sample pad in order to use with like a mini drum setup. If you want a mini drum setup, maybe the Multipad 12 from Yamaha is the better option because I think those are all multi-layered samples, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so that's it for my review, but if you've owned one of these or if you've played one of these at a music store, leave your own mini review down in the comments below. I'll be really interested to read your thoughts. Have an amazing day and I'll see you all in a few.